Believe it or not, this boat is a classroom. The lecture is, without question, a bit unusual. You guys are going to be standing on the back of the boat. You guys are going to be deploying this, okay? So it's going to be hooked with bait. You're going to throw this in. The laboratory is, well, big. It's the ocean. Uh, we're going to go head off probably about two and a half miles east into the Atlantic Ocean off of South Beach. The 25 kids on board are high school students from around the United States participating in a program called Summer Scholars run by the University of Miami. Many are planning to pursue careers in marine biology. And on this sun-drenched day, most will be getting their first chance to work side by side with the university's shark researchers. So why are we out here? Um, so we're out here to catch sharks, right? But there's a reason we're not just out here to catch sharks just for fun and enjoyment. We're actually out here to do research. Stephen Kane is a University of Miami marine biologist. Since the program began, we've brought out over 7,000 high school students. Um, how remarkable is it that on every single trip that we're collecting samples, we're also educating the next uh, generation of marine science. Ashley Lascano and Gabby Fernandez live in Miami. They've grown up on the water. Ashley is hoping to become a marine biologist, Gabby a veterinarian. I want to eventually become a marine biologist because, you know, sharks have always fascinated me and just, you know, getting this experience is, it, it's like, I guess you can say once in a lifetime, but not necessarily, like, you just got to look for it. When I first heard about it, like, I didn't think that we would actually be getting, like, in the shark, like, taking the biopsies, taking, like, the, it's like a, some sort of stress test, like, we would actually be doing all these things. I thought we would just kind of sit back and watch them, but we actually get really hands-on with it. But hands-on will have to wait. There is much work to be done. First, the team lays down a series of what are called drum lines, each with a baited hook. The students do the honors. We got a great, great piece of bait here for you. Left hand like this, perfect. Right hand holding the bait. Once the bait and the weight are in the water, the buoy follows, marking the spot where the line is down. Shark researcher Robbie Romer says there's no better way for the kids to learn. What we try to do is, you know, we make it fun, we make it engaging, we make it visceral so that they learn, but they're also having a great time. You know, they're tagging sharks, they're actually working, they're scientists for a day. And to me, there's no better way than to learn than actually be immersed in, in the very thing you're learning about. With all the lines in, the researchers retrace their steps, checking the lines beginning with the first one they put out. There's no guarantee a shark is on the other end. Sometimes it's just shredded bait. But their luck has changed. Underwater photographer Frank Gibson jumps in, but only after he knows it's safe. A sandbar shark is hooked. It's clearly not in a good mood, thrashing as they hoist it onto the platform. The researchers are quickly on him, like riding a bucking bronco. Ready guys, one, two, three. One, two, three. Right there. The choreographed move centers the shark on the platform. Hold on, let me get the pump in, you're good. The pump is used, researchers say, to pacify the shark and to flush oxygenated water over its gills. Tests are done rapidly. The students are helping too, taking measurements and tagging the sandbar shark with what's called a plastic spaghetti tag. Give it a tug. Tag number confirmed. Minus 20. Read the tag number. Tag number is 374911. What are you learning from tagging these sharks? We're interested in the movements of sharks. Where do they go? Um, if you want to conserve a species, you kind of have to know where it's hanging out. Um, we call that a home range. Uh, we found out with tiger sharks, for instance, that there's a big uh, group of tiger sharks that hang out in the Bahamas uh, and that they're traveling great distances to meet up there. Some of the students watched the drama unfold from the top deck. Taylor Minter was one of them. Her family is from Spain and Portugal. They live now in Maryland. I thought that was amazing. I thought that was so cool. Like, I, I've never seen a shark, like, in person before. Taylor was just fine keeping a little distance between herself and the shark. Kind of want to touch it. I kind of do. Just kind of? Yeah. All right, I really want to touch it. Okay. Photographer Gibson records the moment the sandbar shark is released and swims away. Before long, a nurse shark is on the platform. Stay on it, stay on it. The organized chaos begins again. Here you go, one more. One second. Here you go. One, two, three. Oh, you guys are good, you guys are good. You're good? You're in? All right, let's do this quick. Hands on the other side of the jaw. 
A tiny clipping is taken from the edge of the dorsal fin, like cutting a fingernail. From this, the biologist can look at the shark's dietary trends and the toxicity of its environment. A blood sample is drawn and the animal measured. The students are in the thick of it again, side by side with the research team. 220 for total length. Many shark species are very susceptible to stress and the researchers are mindful of that. So everything from the kind of hooks they use to the length of time of the exam is done with the shark's welfare as the top priority. You noticed how quickly we work today. So our average workup times were somewhere on the neighborhood of you know five to six minutes. And, and frankly, that was maybe even a little longer than what we would like it. So you know we're shooting typically for three to five minutes. Uh, and you know it, once we hit those numbers, it's let's get the animal back in the water. The exam over, the nurse shark is released and swims slowly away past the camera, apparently unfazed by the experience. Two more sharks were caught this day, a second sandbar, and... This is so cool. Oh my God, hammerheads are so cool. I can't believe them, like, that close. Oh my God, he's right there. Whoa! Hammerheads are a rare catch. This one was a good 12 feet long. There's no attempt to bring it on the platform. The biologists say hammerheads are very sensitive to stress. So the workup is done carefully and quickly with the animal in the water. By the day's end, Taylor Minter was all in. I've wanted to go to UM for a while and this was definitely a real eye opener to see if I wanted to actually come here and I love it. And this it has really shown me like this is what I want to do when I'm older. Was this what you'd consider a pretty good day? You know, I forget one of the, the students down there came up to me and, and it's also, we should say it's a beautiful day, but it's also a hot day with, you know, the heat index probably over 100. We're trying to make sure everybody's hydrated. There's a student down there who says, she's looking a little dazed and confused. I said, are you okay? Do you need water? And she's like, no, I, I just tagged a shark for the first time. And I'm like, okay, you know, we did our job today. And the students, well, they did just fine too. Good job, really nice job. Nice job. Okay. The University 